I, I think they need to attend this play at SER because SER is a jewel in the community and they need to support the theater. Theaters uh, across the country are in real trouble. They have been since the pandemic and uh, there's been many, many casualties. Uh, so many small and mid-sized theaters have uh, have gone under in the years uh, during and after the pandemic. Um, and uh, people seem to have fallen out of the habit of going to the theater. And uh, whenever there's a work that, of original theater that is thought-provoking, whether it's for me or any other writer, whether the work is new or old, they need to come and support it. They need to come and stand by their theater like they stood before. They need to they need to support it and uh, and develop it because losing an, an organization like South Coast Repertory will be very bad, and it it it, it will mean that that uh, uh, that all the artists who work there their resumes will come to mean nothing if they if they show their resume just somewhere else and there's no and SER is listed and there is no SER anymore. So it's it's important. It's an important community center. Uh, it's an art center, and uh, and it needs to be supported. They all do. All theaters need to be supported, and uh, and the only way really you can support is by donating to the theater and coming to see the work, and talking it up, and getting bringing guests uh, as quickly as possible. You just need to get. Uh, people to come to the theater. Um, it's it's. Uh, I've never seen um, um, theater undergo such a crisis as as I have in the last few years, and I've been fighting for my person, my my local theater here, the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, for the last two years, and uh, and you know, it, it, every day it's it's uh, it's. It's uh, another day in in this continuing battle to 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 save our companies. They're, 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 if we lose them, it, it it it's it's it'll be a tremendous loss that uh, that will be hard to measure. Um, the an immeasurable loss. Let me just put it that way: it'll be an immeasurable loss. So I really encourage everyone to. They have to come. They have to come see Quixote Nuevo. They have to come see every show in the season. It's vital. Hi, my name is Octavio Solis. I'm the author of Quixote Nuevo, opening at South Coast Repertory. If you want to know more about this play, please listen to this conversation right here. Uh, Quixote Nuevo came from a commission. It came initially from a commission with the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. They wanted me to adapt Don Quixote, the novel by Cervantes. And I said, yes, I mean, the money was too good. And the idea of having it done at the outdoor theater before an audience of 1,200 every night was just really just enticing. And uh, and then I also would like the challenge of trying to adapt that massive, huge novel, uh, which even most Spaniards have never read, but everybody seems to know Don Quixote. Um, and everybody seems to think it's the story of Man of La Mancha, which is a complete fallacy as nothing that that musical has nothing to do with the novel at all um it just has the character of don quixote in it but it's not the story of the book at all so i really went out to try to truly adapt that novel well it's impossible it's just a it's it's a picaresque adventure of a, that a character goes through, and every two pages is a different adventure. I mean, every two or three pages is a different adventure in an 800, almost a 1,000-page book, actually. So it's like you can't include them all. So I had to start picking out, you know, cherry-picking the adventures that seemed like they'd be fun to stage, fun to see on the stage. It also has, like, five novellas in there of seven, 60, 70, 80, like, 20-page long stories within there that have nothing to do with Quixote. He isn't even in there. And then there's two books. It's book one and book two, which are like uh, almost completely different, but there's still Sancho and Sancho Panza and Don Quixote, Don Quixote in there. So anyway, it was, a, it was an undertaking that I felt I successfully pulled off. Uh, and, and it went really well, but I felt like it was still 
like I still didn't quite get it. I didn't get it, and I didn't understand what was missing from the book, from from the play. I I just didn't know what, but I just didn't. I thought I'm not going to let anyone else touch this because I'm not I'm not there. I have to rewrite this. Got to figure it out. And then uh, Shakespeare Dallas in the parks uh, contacted me and said they wanted to wanted me to do it as well, but they wanted. They said, "Can you set it in modern day Texas, and uh, can you add more Spanish to it?" And I went, "Oh, well, there's a thought," and I did it. And but I was lazy about it. I think I, uh, I think I, I just took the play that I had just done, and and um, and put some more Spanish, updated the language, updated the scenery to Texas, Texas border, uh, and. We produced it, and that went okay. It was all right. I still felt like I was missing something. I still felt I was getting closer, but not not close enough. Uh, and it wasn't until Eric Ting at uh, California Shakespeare Theater, or Cal Shakes, up here in uh, East Bay of uh, um, Berkeley and, and, and Orinda, um, that artistic director said, I want you to do this again. Uh, I want to produce this play, but I think you have work to do. And I says, yeah, so do I. What's missing? I feel like something's missing. And he said, you're missing. You're missing from this. You've been so loyal and true to Cervantes that now I want you to take this book away from him and make it yours. Take this story and make it yours. It's not you're missing from this story. I want to do an Octavio Solis play. I don't want to do a Cervantes adaptation. I want you to take it away and make it yours. And that's all I needed to hear. And we worked on it um, with my director, KJ Sanchez, and uh, and a great cast. And uh, again, had a lot of music in it. And we we did it. We We, we pulled it off. I don't know how... I wrote a completely new play, completely new, uh, and set it really close to home. I felt like like the first one I was in Spain, the second one I was at least in Texas, the third one I was home. I was home. I was writing about me. I was writing about my culture in a deep and profound way that really spoke to me, dealt with issues that I was very concerned about. Um, I've always thought that that. Quixote was wasn't just this crazy chaotic hero, you know, uh, some so, so, some uh, guy who likes to fantasize about knights and all that, um, and then did heroic things. I, I I I always thought that he was suffering from dementia, that he was suffering from Alzheimer's or something like that. And uh, my 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 mother is is going through that right now, and has been for a number of years. And she was very present in my consciousness when I was doing that because I wondered when, uh, when and if, if and when symptoms like that would show up in me. Um, and I still have that apprehension because I believe the gene is carried through the mother. And um, so I, um, I worked on that. I, 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 the, I, I made Quixote, my Quixote, be a you know a Spanish a scholar of of Spain. Who lives right along the Texas border, near around Big Bend area, um, up near El Paso, and uh, and he starts to, conf- you know, as he starts to lose his memory, he starts to conflate his own life, his own past, with the events of his favorite novel that he's been a scholar of and knows extremely well, conflating those things together, um, which I think is probably what happens in in. In Cervantes' novel, too. I don't think anyone's ever interrogated it in that way. But I certainly did. I think there are other story arcs that are involved in this. I mean, this is a man who, uh, who, at the end of his life, his his sister and and his niece uh, are all really deeply concerned about him because all he does is spend time with his books and uh, he hardly eats. He's forgetful. He goes into these episodes where he sees things, just like someone with 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 Alzheimer's, and um, and and he knows that they're about to put him in hospice care in 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 a senior facility 
where they can treat him and watch him and take care of him. And he does not want to go that. If he wants to have one last fling, one last adventure uh, to resolve some things from his past that are haunting him. And before he loses his memory completely, he wants to revisit an event from his past that really shaped who he is and why he carries so much guilt in 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 his in his hidden heart and why he used Cervantes as a and, and Don Quixote as as a as a method of study to kind of assuage himself with uh, of, of that guilt so he he becomes his own you know his his literary hero for that time and um and goes around Texas around the southern area of Texas which resembles a lot like a lot of La Mancha, very rocky terrain where there's some sheep, you know, sheep herd, sheep herders there, just like in the novel and um, goats and stuff like that. Very rural, very isolated. And, uh, and where he, where, where I also can then address some important matters that, uh, that I feel needed to be addressed, uh, especially dealing with, on the undocumented. Um, uh, so there are some political issues that I address in, in through through this play, uh, and I felt uh, it incumbent on me to try to do so because I just got tired of uh, when I was writing of of the of the right uh, trying to completely demonize um, immigrants who are coming over, who are coming over looking for, you know, just another. New, a new start, a new life, and uh, I thought, I, I thought, ooh, this could be, this could actually work. I could work, make it work, and I do. I feel like I, like I'm, like, like I'm doing it in a way that is thoughtful, that is also provocative, and, um, and so, uh, but fair. I, I think I'm also doing it in a fair way. So um, those are some of the concerns that are, I, I think, that are present in the work as well. So it's 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 not a work of whimsy. It's not a you know. There's a lot of it's a big visual feast, and it's an oral feast as well, and it's funny, but there are serious things afoot in there in, in this in this play, in this in this work that I'm extremely proud of, uh, um, and uh, especially um, I'm extremely proud of of the way in which. This company, headed by Lisa Portes, has uh, been able to marshal all those elements in the play into a real cohesive whole. And they get it. They all get it. And I'm very, very pleased with their work. What I will say about some of the themes in in Quixote, and and I will say this uh, about my character, which is consistent with Quixote's, uh, with Cervantes's Don Quixote, and that's that he's he's a dangerous man. He's a dangerous man who is not well, and uh, and he does things that are funny, that are in, you know in, enchanting and charming, but ultimately are quite dangerous. It's uh, it's especially if you give him a weapon, uh, if you give him a lance and a, and a sword, he can be very dangerous. And in today's culture. Um, if he didn't, if he weren't a, a student of 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 Cervantes, he might have had a gun, and then he could have done some real serious damage. But they're looking for him. Um, his own family is looking for him. the 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 barber who in, in, in the the barber in Cervantes' novel. It becomes a psych a psych a psychologist is his therapist who has been treating him and giving him medication, uh, and and that's how the barber functioned in those days. The barber function was a bleeder with leeches. Use leeches. The barber's bowl wasn't just to to cut hair. It was actually to catch blood from leeches because they were they were involved in bleeding. He was the equivalent of the doctor in those in that period. And then the other person is is a priest, so he's got someone from the medical world and someone from spiritual world involved with the spiritual world, the life of the soul, who are trying to get him, trying to get to him and, and help him. 
uh, and they're ineffective. They can't do it. They can't catch them. They can't make them see reason. Um, and uh, um, and um, so um, so I, I want to emphasize that about 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 Quixote. He's a dangerous character, um, and it's fun to see him go through these crazy things that he these adventures and exploits. But he kills sheep. He kills another person's herd. He gets the tar beat out of him several times, beaten hard, horrible. Uh, he he takes what he thinks is this potion, and and it makes him vomit, and it makes him go to the bathroom a lot. He, he's uh, uh, and he puts Sancho through hell, and Sancho's just trying to, you know, my Sancho anyway. Um, he's just trying to make sure he stays out of trouble and trying to coax him back home. Um, and by the end, there's a part of him that really deeply believes in him, believes in his quest, because we all have our dreams of a quest like that. It's just that he's doing it um, with half a mind, with a fading, me with his memory fading, and with very little else to r help him. In an age that no longer believes in chivalry. In fact, by the at the time that this novel was written, they didn't believe in chivalry either. The knights were like, the whole world of the knights was at least 400 years old. It was gone. It was, it was a fantasy. And now it's like, you know, even further gone now, although you wouldn't know it, uh, with all the sword and sorcery stuff that's out there. When Cervantes wrote this novel, he really wanted to lampoon and make fun of all those people that were reading all those romances, those knight and shining armor romances and dragon slaying and magicians and magic and giants and trolls and ogres. He just thought that was all bunk, that they should read about real life, about the real world. So he wrote this novel about a guy who really falls for that and how he confronts the real world, how that it clashes when he tries to, you know, attack dragons and it's like, you know, someone's ox, you know, <laughs> or, or sees uh, an entire army when it's just a herd of sheep and he engages them in battle. You know, it's just, uh, he's trying to show them how ridiculous it is to fall for those fantasies. He wrote this, in in uh rebellion of that in in a revolt well the same thing continues today you go look at dungeons and dragons harry potter the uh, lord of the rings uh robin hood all those movies and tv shows that have to deal with sword and sorcery all that magic stuff it's still going on it's still very vital it still really attracts the imagination and so I feel like the novel is even more relevant than it was then. Um, and in some respects, I think my my play is too. Um, so anyway, that's it. I feel like I've come full circle with this work because Man of the Flesh uh, started there and uh, and it, I, it, I, I, it dealt with Day of the Dead and the skeleton world and Mama Kalaka, who was the uh, the the mother of all of death, the mother the mother as death as a symbol of death, and there were all these skeletons. Well, I'm back to that world again, except this time it's from the father point of view, it's Papa Kalaka. So it's really weird how I've come full circle with the Day of the Dead themes in in this work as well. Really, really interesting to me how it uh, circled here with SER. I saw the production that Lisa directed at the Denver Center a year ago. I came in, you know, sometime during the run and I watched it and was, I was tremendously blown away and uh, hoped that somebody else would pick up this production and produce it um, because she, her heart's in it uh, and um, clearly deeply in it. Um, my other colleagues, other director, my first director, KG Sanchez, was able to get three more productions from the Cal Shakes one uh, that went from Hartford Stage to the Huntington in Boston to the Alley Theater in Houston. 
And then Lisa just really loved the play, produced it at the Roundabout Theater in Bethesda, and then did a really full-on production with puppetry, tremendous puppetry at the Denver Center. And that's what we're bringing here. Uh, although she gets to really, really, you know, work on it on, uh, and and develop those themes even more. Um, so I think she's she's really on her way to doing something really special. Um, but I'm not familiar with um, with the rehearsal process. Uh, I I know Herbert Siguenza, and he's a good friend of mine. He's a member of Culture Clash. I've been following their careers for over 30 years. Uh, when they were in San Francisco, and I and I had just moved there back in 1989, 1990. And um, so I'm very honored that he's still doing the part here. It's really, really, really great. Um, And so I think they're going to do well. They go from here to Seattle Rep. They present it there. And then they go to Portland Center Stage in the spring. I never, (laughs) I can't ever predict what what the audience is going to get out of it. I don't even know what I want the audience to get out of it. I just want them to come. Um, I never, uh, when I write the plays, I'm not thinking of the audience. Uh, I'm thinking of the story. Um, and, uh, they'll get what they get out of it. And, uh, and I hope it's, uh, you know, entertaining and, and thought provoking and, you know, what can, what else can one ask out of an audience? Um, except that, you know, just everyone's going to respond differently it's 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 there's no like um the, i have no uh imperatives that way uh i, I don't really yeah you know, they're going to respond how they respond and, and and as long as it's honest it's valid so that's what i'll say my name is octavio solis and i'm the playwright of quixote nuevo that is opening its ser south coast repertory so Please, I urge you all to come and support our company, our theater, and this story, and uh, and as as it provides this wonderful, rich Latino view of Quijote Nuevo uh, to um, the Orange County, Santa Ana area, and and all of SoCal. Please come and support it. <laughs>